Putin, can you teach me about Russia? I guess. Oh hey, didn't see you there. Do you want do you want to learn about Russia too? All right, let's get started. Russia is the largest country on earth. It is so large that it spans over two continents, Europe and Asia. Russia's terrain consists of plains and low hills west of the Ural Mountains, forests and tundra in Siberia to the north, and mountains along the southern border. The climate of these different environments ranges from Arctic weather in Siberia to mild temperatures west of the Urals and to the south. One would think that th with the geography and large area that Russia covers that there would be a huge diversity among the people living there. However, this is not true because Russians make up at least 80% of the population, while the rest is spread out among Tartar, Ukrainian, Bashkir, Chuvash, and other ethnic groups. The dominant religions in Russia also reflect the eth ethnic groups present. Orthodox Christianity is the main religion with most of its followers being Russian, while the second religion, Islam, has most of its followers coming from the ethnic groups. Islam has many divisions, so the second religion is not just Islam alone. There is bound to be ethnic and religious conflict in this huge country. In order to maintain stability, the Russian Federation is led by the strong and powerful leader, me, President Vladimir Putin. Aside from the basic information about Russia, let's take a closer look and find out what we can learn from this magnificent country. As you know, Russia is a large country with a diverse landscape. We're going to explore this diverse landscape and see what it has in store for us. The first spot we're going to take a look at is Mount Elbrus. This is one of the seven summits, the highest summits on the seven continents. The mountain used to be a volcano, but it has not erupted since 50 AD. The mountain is a part of the Caucasus Mountains, which are the most rugged mountains in the world. Mount Elbrus is beautiful and provides a great view from the bottom and top. Another feature of Russia's landscape is the Valley of Geysers, located in Kamchatka. With around 200 geysers, this is the second largest concentration of geysers in the world. It is a spectacular sight to see the geysers erupt and spew tons of water into the air. Although it is very hard to get to this remote location, the site is priceless. Our next destination is Lake Baikal. It is the world's oldest and deepest freshwater lake. The lake runs for about 400 miles, splitting through huge snow-capped mountains. This is a beautiful natural landscape that is home to animals and small villages. The final landscape we will look at is the Russian tundra. The tundra spans across a huge portion of Russia, just under the polar cap. It has long winters and short summers. The temperature usually stays below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The harsh terrain is covered with a lot of snow and ice. It is an interesting area, but not one we would recommend to visit. In addition to Russia's landscape, the country also has many great tourist attractions for people to visit. Today, we are going to take a look at some of those attractions. The first place we are going to visit is the Trans-Siberian Railway. It is part of the world's longest railway, and it was built in 1891 by Tsar Alexander. The train runs from Moscow to Vladivostok, and it is one of the best ways to travel throughout Russia. Our next attraction is the Kremlin. This is probably one of the most popular locations in Russia, and for good reason. The Kremlin is home to Russia's top government officials, including myself. The Kremlin is a self-contained city with a multitude of palaces, armories, and churches. It is a medieval fortress that provides a good look into Russia's past colliding with its present form. The Hermitage Museum is another great attraction. It was founded in 1756 by Catherine the Great and has been a great addition to St. Petersburg Square. It houses over 3 million unique items of culture and art from around the globe. The main building, known as the Winter Palace, was the former residence of Russian emperors. The final location we will visit is St. Basil's Cathedral. Ivan the Terrible built the cathedral to honor the success of the Russian military campaign against the Mongols. The cathedral is a staple to Russia and its unique architecture provides for a spectacular sight. Now that we have explored Russia's landscape and visited its famous attractions, let's take a look into Russian's culture. A very significant part of Russian culture is the food. Russian cuisine includes foods that are energy rich and able to warm someone up during Russia's long winter. A typical meal usually consists of eggs, bread, meat, 
potatoes, and butter. These components of a Russian meal provide the necessary fats and carbohydrates to endure the harsh winter. Now, I realize that you are wondering what Russians eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That is a very good question. Hey yo, pick up some of that bread. Thanks. A Russian breakfast begins early in the morning with kasha or tovarog. Kasha is a porridge made of grains and tovarog is similar to cottage cheese. Russians drink coffee, tea, or juice to wash down their breakfast. Now unlike the US, lunch is considered the main meal in Russia. Their lunch consists of three courses. The first course includes soup and meat with potatoes. The second course consists of porridge or pasta. And the third course is a dessert with kompot, which is a drink made by boiling water with fruit. Lunch is the largest meal of the day. However, that does not mean that dinner is not important. A Russian dinner consists of some appetizers and the main meal, which could be potatoes, meat, or fish. For Russians, dinner is more focused on spending time with the family over the actual meal itself. I hope your stomachs are not too full because we still have more Russian culture to digest. What do Russians do for fun? Well, there are many different forms of entertainment in Russia that one could enjoy. If you are looking to have some afternoon lunch, then you should go out to Bilingua. Bilingua is a cafe that sells books and strange clothing. In spite of the name, the cafe does not sell that many foreign language books. However, that should not stop you from having a pleasant lunch while reading some Russian literature. Another form of entertainment in Russia is clubbing. If, er if you are looking to have a great time, you should check out Propaganda. This is an old warehouse that is a cafe by day and a club at night. They clear the tables for the DJ to set up and make room for the dance floor. However, if you are interested in a more traditional form of Russian entertainment, then you should see a play at one of Russia's many theaters. The Hermitage Theater in St. Petersburg is a very famous theater that stands on the site of the original Winter Palace of Peter I. It was built in 1783, but during the Soviet era it was only used for speeches. It reopened in the 1980s and is being used to show theatrical performances again. These forms of entertainment prove that you will never be bored when visiting Russia. Sports are a very important part of Russian culture. Three famous sports in Russia are hockey, figure skating, and chess. Russia is known to dominate when it comes to hockey. The intense training that Russian athletes go through has created some of the greatest hockey players of all time, such as Vyacheslav Fetisov. He is a six-time world champion, two-time Olympic Camion, and he won two back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. Yep. We are going to watch a clip of Fetisov scoring in an intense penalty shootout. You can see how determined he was to be the greatest. Another famous sport on the ice in Russia is figure skating. Figure skating boomed in the 1950s when the Soviet Union became an athletic world power. This power in figure skating became apparent in 1964 because in every Winter Olympics since then, a Russian pair has won a gold medal. I mentioned that a famous sport in Russia is chess, and I was not kidding. They consider chess to be a physically and mentally demanding sport. Let's take a look at a historic match between Vladimir Kremenik and Garry Kasparov. As you can see, Gary Kasparov is defeated by Vladimir Kremnik. These sports should keep you on the edge of your seats and cheering for hours on end. I hope you had fun and learned a lot about Russia. It's a great country. Come back soon.